Dick Carlson. Oh, okay. <laughs> my, my name is Larry Carlson. I uh, have been working at the Seattle VA, Puget Sound Healthcare System is the name now, for about 40 years. Uh, first 20 years, I was a clinical microbiologist. And then the last slightly under 20 years, I've been a programmer for VISTA. And basically, I got into it because um, we were doing efficacy studies of blood culture techniques, serology techniques. And so you wind up, of course, capturing and analyzing data. And uh, I enjoyed computers. I built a little computer on my own. And I wound up spending so much time analyzing data that I was, became the uh, ad pack and then the programmer for, uh, for the lab package. And they had a, a very interesting policy for about two years. I was actually uh, hired by the lab, but allowed to be a programmer in IRM. So they had a special agreement uh, where they would let me as long as they could control what I did. But it uh, made a very interesting two years because you didn't have to cover a number of packages. You just had one. So uh, during that time, I wrote about 20 lab uh, interfaces, which we used for a while, some direct connect interfaces. And you just get to be very comfortable with one piece of VISTA, which of course is a very large, complicated, complicated uh, array of packages. So I really enjoyed that. And then at the end of two years, I moved over and just became a full-time programmer. So I've been mostly an M programmer. I've done some, uh, some Delphi work, some front ends for uh, cardiology and GI and a few other things. But really enjoyed it. And well, VISTA has, uh, you know, I, I became accustomed to it. So first I programmed a machine language and then assembly for a little while. But, you know, um, since I really grew up using VISTA and using M, I thought uh, that, you know, late binding, sparse arrays, all the things that make M uh, and the file man definitions so powerful were just something everybody had. And... Um, and VISTA was not well liked by visitors. So I used to um, help with infectious disease rounds. I'm a microbiologist, not a doc, but we would have rounds and I would show plates and talk to them about how we would proceed and what was important. And, and it was not uncommon for one of the visiting, uh, you know, a resident or a fellow uh, who was at the VA to comment they really disliked VISTA. I really hate VISTA, you know, it's this roll and scroll, it's not very good. And I'd say, well, why are you here? And invariably they say, uh, well, you know, I'm doing a study on, uh, you know, diabetic foot ulcers or some other thing, and I need, I need their labs, I need their radiology history, I need their clinic appointments, I need this and I need that. You can't get it anywhere else. And I, you know, so you'd, I'd say, well, you, you don't really dislike Vista. You may dislike Roll and Scroll. So um, the advent of, of CPRS is, as you know, of the GUI front end patient's chart really turned it around because that was the one piece that uh, the people didn't recognize the importance of the database uh, uh, was missing, was that front end that made it easier for practitioners to use, which I, which I understand. The role of scroll is not, is not very good uh, for when you're treating patients. So. And, it also, uh, and it also taught me about uh, data to whatever level I know about data. And so, uh, you know, if you're, going to, if you're going to do studies, you really need every jot and tittle. You just can't not have any information. And this is this powerhouse that can store any amount of information. And so, you know, we'd have vendors come who were handling glucose meters or some other product and say, so, you know, we'll send you a PDF and you can put that as an image in the patient's file. And I'd say, well, you know, is that how you store your data? And they'd say, well, we're not stupid. Of course not. <laughs> we, we store the discrete data because we want to be able to pull data out and analyze it. And so VISTA has the uh, ability to let you look at all of a patient's data and analyze all the different packages at once on a patient and really get a very good, you can just do things you can't do. And, uh, and, as, and as Denise was uh, speaking at the last meeting, it also, you know, it's inpatients, it's outpatients, it's clinic appointments. And so there just isn't anything that can't be there. Um, so sometimes you need, obviously, images have their place. Radiology uses images. There are times when an image says so much. Uh, nonetheless, if you're, uh, if you're really going to package data together and look at, um, what did they call it? 
It's not expert care anymore, it's evidence-based care. If you're going to do evidence-based care, you've got to have evidence, and you don't have evidence if you just have images or you just have text documents. So data mining can overcome some of those problems, or you can just file it correctly the first time. You know, I'm not going to be your best historian here, but I think it over 10 years ago. Um, more than that, I think. Well, you know, the, t the trouble is, um, I mean, the good thing about VISTA was it had so much data that, that when people wanted to do studies, they, they came they, to a VA because they could get all this data across a number of different packages and events that happened in a patient's life. However, uh, you know, the University of Washington and Harborview and I'm Swedish and Children's, other hospitals in the area all had uh, graphically built interfaces. And usually they were fairly specialized. We do just inpatient, we do just outpatient, we do just radiology, uh, and they were not, uh, and they didn't speak well to each other. And so, um, so if you're a physician, it's uh, I can understand, I'm not a physician, why it's very nice to be able to bring up a patient, see their TIU notes, see their progress notes, look up their labs, and you know, get a, learn as much as, as you need at the moment for that patient. But if you want to do uh, evidence-based care, if you want to see what, what policies and what procedures are really working, you then have to have an all-encompassing database like VISTA. Uh, so, roll and scroll made it very hard. I can understand why a provider would not want to go into VISTA, which still has all its menus, and look up a patient in VISTA and, you know, have this stuff scroll by on a terminal, so. So is VISTA a viable solution for uh, Yes, it certainly is. Uh, VISTA has, um, you know, these are questions I'm sure you've asked and you should ask some of the really knowledgeable people that are here at this meeting, and people like Oroville, uh, Denise and others who've who've been working with it. But it certainly is for a number of reasons. It, it is in some ways, I suppose, much more power than they might need in some respects. But it is, um, it is a, the software itself, although implementing it is not free, the software is largely free and uh, I think very clearly defined and will certainly do everything a, a small, and it will run on uh, for a small, you know, for a physician or a small community. You can run it basically on a PC with Linux and, and uh, you know, GTM and download Vista. And so I think it is, I think it is very much what they could use. Well, I'm glad you asked me because this I know a little about, not a lot, but certainly more than about me. <laughs> Vista is the yes package. So when people come to you as a, as a, uh, as a programmer or a developer and they say, we would really like to be, uh, things as simple as we'd like to be notified when someone has a, uh, an HIV positive or a hepatitis B positive or uh, any number of other things. Can you make that work? And there are already facilities in VISTA to make that work. So you can do it. And uh, then they would come and say, we'd really like to see you know, patients at certain clinics with certain policies and certain procedures wrong, and you can do that. So VISTA has all of these fingers in it. So the, everything is in files. The files have cross-references. So you can build a cross-reference or a transaction that whenever anybody puts a glucose in a patient, you can have something fire off, and it can send messages. It can build a database. It can do anything you want. Um, Vista is built on menus, but it's also built on another system called protocols, which look like menus. But when, for instance, um, when someone is given a pharmaceutical or admitted, uh, we'll, use, we'll use admitted. Uh, when somebody is admitted to the hospital, there's a protocol that fires off, and that protocol sends HL7 messaging out. But more than that, it allows you to add any other protocols you want to the bottom of that. And as long as you, as you pick up that protocol, you can go in and you'll have the enti entire environment, so all the patient variables, everything available to you, and your only promise is when I'm done, I'm going to go back, I'm going to leave the environment the way it was when I, when I left, is to do no damage. And so there's almost all of the activities that happen in VISTA, uh, important activities, have a protocol running. And so um, someone will ask whether or not, 
uh, well, one of the most common things was for a lot, a lot of the external machines now is I would like ADT messaging. So whenever patients admitted or discharged, I'd like to get an HL7. Is that much trouble? And I'd say, no, yes, that's easy. And do you have to do any programming? Uh, no, don't have to do any programming. You can just go in and uh, attach uh, protocols and links. So there's, you know, there's protocols, there's menus, there's transactions. And so the answer is just always yes. Almost anything you can think of, somebody already has built in. And so, for instance, you know, the EWD um, uh, people were saying they're right now using Mailman. Mailman, although it was put in Vista years ago, is a very powerful tool. And now it's back, and it's going to be part of basically the new graphical interface for Vista, uh, which is going to be, uh, you know, license-free, work on, on any, any type of uh, thing like an iPad or a phone or, uh, you know, web browser. And so it's, it just seems like no matter what I've ever been asked to do, it's already been built in. I often had to do some coding, but I mean the facility is already there. You don't have to start from scratch. Uh, that's a very good question, and I think that it's coming back. At one time, it was very good. There was there's forum, and so there was, there was actually a mail forum mail group, and a and a uh, you know uh, group set up to uh, keep track of all of the things that have been done out there. And then for the last 10 or 15 years, it has slowly dissipated more than it should have, and I think very largely because the VA has had decided some time ago that they were going to outsource uh, things. And so they stopped internally supporting what they used to. So the answer is there is something called forum. And most people in the nation still sign on. So if somebody asks for something for labs to be done, you can go to forum and say, has anybody done this? Um, there are some restrictions. So you can see what other people have done. But you, might, you may or may not be able to install it at your site. Uh, well, because all VA hospitals have people like me that may or may not be uh, very well equipped to write a piece of code standardized in a fashion that the VA would like to support it. So as you know, there's class one, class two, and class three. I don't know, class two is sort of a transitional thing. And so the, uh, and so the junk I write is largely class three. But then you can put in for it to be, uh, you know, for review, redaction, they'll ch then check. And so recently now, they have moved in this vision and this region into a regional development team. And they will take on something that you've done, and I've, I've done a couple of things. And then they look at it, they tear it apart, they look at it, they make sure it's OK. And if it's OK, then they'll release it. And then anybody in the region who wants it will be able to pick it up and use it without having to go through the administrative hassles of, of saying, is this OK? You know, I should be able to answer that, and I can't. It is the VA, but um, is it ITOS now? You, frankly, I haven't followed this as well as I should. I really like M, and I'm really not good at administration. So, at my last review, my my uh, my direct boss, Joel, uh, was doing a review, and he said uh, something, and I said, "Well, I like working for the VA," and he says, "Well, you know, you don't really work for the VA." He said, "Do you know who you work for?" And I said, uh, "No. <laughs> I know. I still get a check." <laughs> So I think now I work for ITOS. So the region, region one works is it for ITOS, I think. So it's not the local VA, it's the national. So I think, I'm, I think we're now part of a national IT group. And anybody else you have come in here will be able to say that much better. <laughs> well, I'm continually impressed with, well, I guess I can think of a number of things. I'm continually impressed with M as a language. I'm uh, continually impressed with the amount of uh, incredibly intelligent design that went into it with FileMan, you know, the data dictionaries and the FileMan uh, structures that have just lasted uh, over the decades. And they've been built on 
so that, you know, there really, it really isn't an old language at all. Like Rick always says, it's actually been under construction for a long time. So I've been very impressed with what went into building it that has made it now, this many years later. I think, uh, I think it's still recognized unquestionably as the best healthcare software package out there. And then I'm very impressed with the people that work on it. Um, there are so many really bright people working in Vista. And, uh, and for the most part, it really is for healthcare. They really are trying to put together uh, a great healthcare package and just enjoy the intellectual stimulation and the idea that they're helping. Um, and so, uh, so I've met some wonderful people, very friendly people and very bright people. Uh, you know, I can't, not really, not nothing, nothing like, you know, like George Timpson or Rick Marshall or any of those people, that, you know, any of you people would have, so, uh, I mean, I have, I suppose, lots of stories, but none really with the history of Vista, no. Um, uh, well, again, I'm not really equipped for a lot of these answers, but I think to begin with, uh, because, of the, uh, because of the incredibly intelligent design of everything from the M language through, uh, through the development of Vista and FileMan based, and so I think the reason that it has been such a powerful package is because its, its skeleton, its structure is, is so good that it doesn't outdate. It doesn't you know, patient databases don't get too big, nobody's thought of something it can't handle. Um, and so I really think that's the biggest part. And then there's this enormous community of um, programmers, both centrally and at the hospitals, who work on it. And we were given a lot of leeway to, I mean, if somebody asked for me to do something, uh, for instance, there's a, uh, I put together, a, among other things, a, uh, there's a, a cardiology package where they do stress testing and they look at an enormous variety of data and wanted to put it on, uh, you know, get a GUI front end and keep the data in Vista and, uh, and most of the design work credit would, would clearly go to uh, um, the physicians in charge. But, um, but, you know, you're given a free hand. I was allowed to just develop it and then they check to see if it worked. And I enjoy that creation part more than anything else. Uh, because they worked with me. Uh, uh, you know, that's the other thing is the healthcare workers that I have run into have been spectacular. So Dr. Caldwell said, this, this is the data I'm keeping. He'd already built a lot of the database. And he said, this is the way I'd like it to work. And I would write a front end and he would, and then he'd have me come up and he'd say, now this is working and this isn't because he understands, you know, cardiology and nuclear medicine. And, and my part was just to make it look and feel right and to make sure that I stored the data and could retrieve the data and do what calculations he needed correctly. But the, uh, but the staff has always been very nice and very open uh, to have you come up. And because they're getting something they really want, there's a big, I mean, there's a reason that they're happy to have you come by and help you and show you what, what's been done and then help you again until it's right. You know, um, I'm not engaged in that part of it anymore, so I don't, but I would guess that most of that, much of that is gone, I think. There are still things that aren't as, uh, you know, there's still things that aren't as smooth in Vista and CPRS, which is, which is going to be replaced. You know, they talk about this monster, and it, I think it did a fantastic job for a long time, but it's going to be replaced because maintenance has become this incredible issue. But... Um, I mean, I'm, there must still be, I'm sure there are still facets of, of VISTA and, its, and the physician's experience that aren't what they would like it to be. But I don't think there's anything else out there that is liked better.
Well, that's a good question. Um, I think, uh, you know, I haven't got great answers, but I, uh, but I have a few. Uh, number one, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the web and has brought the world together. And so you don't really have to have a geek on board. Uh, you really can have, just have uh, consultants that can help you with, with a project. And, uh, and so, um, but I do think that's necessary. So, you know, with the, many of the programmers in the VA originally came from lab or pharmacy, and that served, or, or nursing, some of them were physicians who've uh, also done IT, and that serves a great purpose because you know, you know the intricacies of how the hospital and how the lab works, and that brings a lot to the table other than just saying, I really like the way this database is set up. You really do know how things run. And uh, I think that it's not going to be nearly the struggle it used to be because of, because of webinars and you can, you, know, you can really sit in a room with a screen and have fairly close contact with someone else. And as long as they're willing to uh, sit in a room and tell you what they want, uh, it's not quite the same as being there, but it's, but it's very good these days. You know, I don't have very mu I don't have very much experience with them. They, um, I can tell you that for the most part, uh, which I think is exactly the right thing, uh, that many of them, most of them, are not really interested in just they're interested in patients, and so what they want to know is how do I sign in? How do I bring it up? How do I get data out? How do I put data in? And they really aren't interested in what you and I are interested in, uh, which I can understand. And I think and yeah, that's right. That's right. It's, it is working well. You know, every, uh, every, I think at this point, every room has a PC in it. Uh, you can get in quickly and work on a patient. So I suspect, um, I suspect the more invisible we, we become, the better they will like it. And I think that's come a long ways. Um, well, let's see. I guess if I was going to whine, uh, one of the I, this is going to turn around. I think now, um, uh, with the acceptance of, uh, of of Vista, I think is much stronger now outside of the VA community, and I'm thrilled with that. I'm thrilled with the open source. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work, but that's exactly the way to go. Um, and so, I, one of the things that's happened in the VA that I hated to see happen because I'm a jot and tittle guy was the uh, dependence on vendors for specific projects and specific data. And I think I already mentioned, uh, Rick wrote a white paper years ago, which I really liked when he was working with us. And uh, vendors will do whatever is fast and simple, and they are not dedicated to the long-term structure of the patient database at all. As a matter of fact, that's probably something they're really not very happy about in some ways. So if you can store We'll use glucose just because it's an easy example. If you can store a patient's glucose results or a patient's endoscopy results and all the associated data and just push into Vista an image, a PDF or something, that's great for them. That's easy. They generate that PDF or, uh, or that image from their data. They send it to you. But they don't store the, I mean, they store the data because they know that sooner or later you're going to want to go back and get some of that data from them. They aren't. And so, um, I'm hoping that things will, and I think they will, turn around such that Vista will have in it, Vista or whatever they're going to call it in the future, all of the discrete data on a patient that can, that can be done without images. And then when someone wants it, you know, in a way, uh, again, I'm not the one to, uh, <laughs> to criticize or specify, but in a way, I really don't like the TIU documents. They are a text document, and I understand what they mean to a physician. Uh, to a, and uh, but and I understand they can pull in a certain amount of information before they pop up. But that could all be done in a virtual system, and so really, there's no reason. Uh, much of what's in a TIU document, much of the text that's being stored, should really not be being stored in a text document. I mean, they're actually storing in TIU documents lab results and other results that may be uh, incorrect and fixed later, and they aren't fixed in the document. Or there'll be subsequent labs that make it clear that something else was going on. 
So I'm really hopeful that, uh, that we will go back to storing every single jot and tittle and then, and then provide with the, what the providers need. And that's, I want a nice, clean image so I can look at this and say, you know, this is my patient, this is what's going on, and this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, you know, that's a different kind of jot and tittle. <laughs> uh, that, you know, that's a good question, and I'm not sure what the answer to that is. Uh, it clearly, having, <laughs> having codes for being squished by a non-venomous reptile is, is, uh, is, is out there. So I don't really mean that. However, I guess what I do mean is um, I have been at uh, one in particular meetings, where a vendor was speaking to uh, people about a product they offered. And they were going to store all the data on their PC because it would be too much data to push onto Vista. And that's a terrible shame that, that people didn't understand that's crazy talk. I mean, really? You really think this can go on some provider's server in your, in your closet and it won't work on Vista? I mean, uh, there really is almost you know, limitless room in Vista practically speaking, and so, uh, so anyway, it's just, just great, and I must say it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed being a programmer. Oh yeah, it's great fun. Uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, at my head. <laughs> really oh, I'd say go to Vista. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, M is one of the few internationally standardized languages. I I go to Vista. Uh, the you know the a part of the attraction. Um, uh, I have three children, and one's one's a math guy, and one is a uh, is a web developer. And you know, part of the um, I think a big part of the uh, attraction to IT for a lot of people is the financial reward they can get. And and uh, you know, we're in Redmond. So you know, you can uh, you can independently build a, an app for a phone, or you can help with a, a, a package with Microsoft or Amazon or someone, and make a lot of money. And so you know, my son has a lot of fairly young friends who are pretty much independent for the rest of their life. But I, that isn't, I don't think that's very fulfilling. I'm not against money, but obviously, but uh, but this is just great fun. Uh, it's ever expanding, it's not going away, and the future is so bright that I think it would be, I think it'd be a wise thing for a young person to consider, uh, you know, Vista and its EWD and the other things coming down the line would make, I think, a much more solid career. Uh, you bet. So it's, you know, like any, like, uh, like, I think what most private programmers like, it's just great to develop something that works. And don't think I consider it a sense of power, but I mean it's of accomplishment. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. So. Thank you. Thank you.